Part 3. The. Vessel. Chapter 30 The First Hour. It takes a little while for everyone to explain to their parents that one. We're all going to miss graduation, and two. We're driving to New York, to three. See a town that may or may not technically exist, and hopefully four. Intercept the Omnictionary poster, who according to the randomly capitalized evidence is five. Margot Roth Spiegelman. Radar is the last to get off the phone, and when he finally does, he says, I'd like to make an announcement. My parents are very annoyed that I'm missing graduation. My girlfriend is also annoyed, because we were scheduled to do something very special in about eight hours. I don't want to get into details about it, but this had better be one fun road trip. Your ability to not lose your virginity is an inspiration to us all, Ben says next to me. I glance at Radar through the rearview mirror. Woohoo road trip. I tell him. In spite of himself, a smile creeps across his face. The pleasure of leaving. By now we are on I-4, and traffic is fairly light, which in and of itself is borderline miraculous. I'm in the far left lane driving 8 miles an hour over the 55 miles per hour speed limit, because I heard once that you don't get pulled over until you're going 9 miles an hour over the speed limit. Very quickly, we all settle into our roles. In the way back, Lacey is the provisioner. She lists aloud everything we currently have for the trip, the half of a Snickers that Ben was eating when I called about Margot, the 212 beers in the back, the directions I printed out, and the following items from her purse, eight sticks of winter green gum, a pencil, some tissue, three tampons, one pair of sunglasses, some chapstick, her house keys, a YMCA membership card, a library card, some receipts, $35, and a BP card. From the back, Lacey says, this is exciting. We're like under-provisioned pioneers. I wish we had more money, though. At least we have the BP card, I say. We can get gas and food. I look up into the rearview mirror and see Radar, wearing his graduation gown, looking over into Lacey's purse. The graduation gown has a bit of a low-cut neck so I can see some curled chest hairs. You got any boxers in there, he asks. Seriously, we better be stopping at the gap, Ben adds. Radar's job, which he begins with the calculator on his handheld, is research and calculations. He's alone in the row of seats behind me, with the directions and the minivan's owner's manual spread out next to him. He's figuring out how fast we need to travel in order to make it by noon tomorrow. How many times we'll need to stop in order to keep the car from running out of gas, the locations of BP stations on our route and how long each stop will be, and how much time we'll lose in the process of slowing down to exit. We gotta stop four times for gas. The stops will have to be very very short. Six minutes at the most off highway. We're looking at three long areas of construction, plus traffic in Jacksonville, Washington, D.C. and Philadelphia although it will help that we're driving through D.C. around 3 in the morning. According to my calculations, our average cruising speed should be around 72. How fast are you going? 63, I say. The speed limit is 55. Go 72, he says. I can't, it's dangerous, and I'll get a ticket. Go 72, he says again. I press my foot down hard on the gas. The difficulty is partly that I am hesitant to go 72 and partly that the minivan itself is hesitant to go 72. It begins to shake in a way that implies it might fall apart. I stay in the far left lane, even though I'm still not the fastest car on the road, and I feel bad that people are passing me on the right, but I need clear road ahead, because unlike everyone else on this road, I can't slow down. And this is my role, my role is to drive, and to be nervous. It occurs to me that I have played this role before. And Ben? Ben's role is to need to pee. At first it seems like his main role is going to be complaining about how we don't have any CDs and that all the radio stations in Orlando suck except for the college radio station, which is already out of range. But soon enough, he abandons that role for his true and faithful calling, needing to pee. I need to pee, he says at 3.06. We've been on the road for 43 minutes. We have approximately a day left in our drive. Well, says Radar, the good news is that we will be stopping. The bad news is that it won't be for another 4 hours and 30 minutes. 
I think I can hold it, Ben says. At 3.10, he announces, actually, I really need to pee. Really? The chorus responds, hold it. He says, but I and the chorus responds again, hold it. It is fun, for now, Ben needing to pee and us needing him to hold it. He is laughing, and complaining that laughing makes him need to pee more. Lacey jumps forward and leans in behind him and starts tickling at his sides. He laughs and whines and I laugh, too, keeping the speedometer on 72. I wonder if she created this journey for us on purpose or by accident regardless, it's the most fun I've had since the last time I spent hours behind the wheel of a minivan. Go 72, he says again. I press my foot down hard on the gas. The difficulty is partly that I am hesitant to go 72 and partly that the minivan itself is hesitant to go 72. It begins to shake in a way that implies it might fall apart. I stay in the far left lane, even though I'm still not the fastest car on the road, and I feel bad that people are passing me on the right, but I need clear road ahead, because unlike everyone else on this road, I can't slow down. And this is my role, my role is to drive, and to be nervous. It occurs to me that I have played this role before. And Ben? Ben's role is to need to pee. At first it seems like his main role is going to be complaining about how we don't have any CDs and that all the radio stations in Orlando suck except for the college radio station, which is already out of range. But soon enough, he abandons that role for his true and faithful calling, needing to pee. I need to pee, he says at 3.06. We've been on the road for 43 minutes. We have approximately a day left in our drive. Well, says Radar. The good news is that we will be stopping. The bad news is that it won't be for another 4 hours and 30 minutes. I think I can hold it, Ben says. At 3.10, he announces, actually, I really need to pee. Really? The chorus responds, hold it. He says, but I and the chorus responds again, hold it. It is fun, for now, Ben needing to pee and us needing him to hold it. He is laughing and complaining that laughing makes him need to pee more. Lacey jumps forward and leans in behind him and starts tickling at his sides. He laughs and whines and I laugh, too, keeping the speedometer on 72. I wonder if she created this journey for us on purpose or by accident regardless, it's the most fun I've had since the last time I spent hours behind the wheel of a mini-